Scientists, are you ready for a virtual field trip? From sunny Los Angeles, let's go to the California Science Center with your hosts, Mariela and Monica with a special appearance from Robert Garcia. Let's go to the California Science Center. Hi scientists, and welcome to our virtual field trips at the California Science Center. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. Virtual field trips will have a question of the day. And today's question is How can we make something move? Pause the video now to write down the question of the day in your notebooks. And don't forget to write down or draw things that you observe in the video to help you answer the question of the day. All virtual field trips will also have a buzzword. Today's buzzword is force. Anytime you hear this word, be sure to make check marks or tally marks somewhere in your notebook to keep track of how many times you hear the buzzword. Can you count them all? Before I forget, there might be times we ask you to pause to think about a question. You'll see this sign and hear this sound to remind you to pause. Okay, scientists, I think we're ready to begin. Follow me. Ouch! What was that? What was what? When I went to reach the handrail, it felt like something invisible shocked me. Ah, uh, that shock you felt must have been static electricity. Like when you're sliding down the slide at the park, you hear that crackling sound when you're sliding down? That's static electricity. How does static electricity happen? Mm, oh, I know. Let me show you. Come on. Have you ever seen this before? Whoa, what is it? This is called a Van de Graaff generator. When the generator is turned on, the rubber belt inside rubs against a wheel. That causes energy to build up an invisible force that needs to be released. Oh, is that what happens when we slide down a slide? Yes. Your clothing rubbing against the slide causes that energy to build up and it needs to be released. We call that static electricity. In the case of the Van de Graaff generator, the static electricity is released from the top of the bulb like this. Oh, it zapped! Kind of like what I felt when I touched the metal, only I don't think it was as strong. Yeah. Now, let's investigate a little bit more. Check out this wig! What do you think will happen if I place this wig on top of the generator? Let's find out! Here we go, are you ready? Wow! The hair is standing up! But what is making that happen? Well, to better understand what is happening, we have to get small, like microscopically small. Static electricity all starts with a tiny thing called an atom. Everything in the world is made up of atoms, but they are so small you can't see them with the naked eye. You'd need a special microscope to see those atoms. Do my shoes have atoms? Yes. And this cart? Yes. And each atom has a positive and negative charge. These charges can cause objects to attract or repel each other. When you rub a balloon against your hair, the balloon is building up a negative charge, leaving the hair with a mostly positive charge. Since the balloon is negatively charged and the hair is positively charged, they create an attraction. No matter where you move the balloon, the hair will follow. Oh, so opposite charges attract. Exactly. What about that other word you used? Um, repel. How does that happen? When you have two of the same charges, like two positive charges or two negative charges, 
They create a force that pushes or repels. So, when the wig was on the generator, I noticed that the hair was standing up. Does that mean that there were two of the same charges? Yes, so the hair standing up shows that it is being repelled away from the generator. What do you think will happen if I place my hand over the wig? Only one way to find out! Can I try it? Of course! Whoa! The wig looks like it's attracted to my hand because it follows wherever my hand goes. Hmm, this reminds me a lot of magnets. Come with me. Just like static electricity, magnets also have a force that can attract and repel. How can that be? Static electricity and magnets are different. You're right. Rather than positive and negative charges, magnets have poles which create north and south magnetic fields. The magnetic fields are what cause magnets to attract or repel. Can we see magnets repel and attract? Of course! Let's explore them together. Here we have two magnets, a U-shaped magnet and a regular magnet. What do you think will happen when I bring this magnet to this side of the U-shaped magnet? Hmm, I don't know. Will it attract? Here, try it. Wow, the magnets move towards each other. I could feel the force of the two magnets coming together. Exactly. Now, what do you think will happen if I take the same magnet and move it towards the other side of the U-shaped magnet? Hmm, well, it's the same magnet, so it will attract? Let's find out. Here, try it. This should be easy. Oh, it seems like they don't want to be together. Arr. Exactly. Now the magnets are repelling away from each other. All magnets have two ends, a north pole and a south pole. When you have opposite poles, the magnets attract. But when you have the same pole, the magnets repel. So north repels north, and south repels south. Not only does this type of force prevent the magnets from coming together, but did you also notice this same force can be used to move the magnet? Wow. Hey, Mariela, I know someone that can help us explore this some more. Come on. Robert? Hi. Oh, hello, young scientist. I'm Robert, and I work with the guest services department here at the California Science Center. Robert, we just learned a bunch about electricity and magnetism, and now we want to explore more using magnets. Say no more. I know just what we can do. Here, we have these two cars. Each of the cars have a magnet attached to the back of them. We're going to position these other magnets so that they will repel the cars and push them forward. But the question is, will more magnets make the cars go further? How many magnets would you like to use? I'm gonna use 10. More magnets means a stronger force to repel, right? I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. I think I'll go with three. Scientists, whose car do you think will go further? All right, let's get ready. On your mark, get set, go. Whoa, my car went further. That was a close race, Monica. I guess more magnets is better. That's right, Mariela. Since you have more magnets, they say stronger repelling force, which moves your car further. Congratulations on your win, Mariela. You may have won this time, but I'm going to win the next one. Hey, scientists, maybe you can set up your own race in your class or at home. That's a great idea, Monica. Scientists, what else can you do with magnets? Hope you had fun exploring. See you soon. Hey, scientists, ready to get your body moving? 
Let's play a game. For this game, your arms and legs will be south magnetic poles, just like Monica's. A magnet with either a north or south pole will appear. Depending on what color square the magnet lands on, that's the body part that you will move. That body part will either attract or repel from the magnet that appears. So make sure you're paying close attention. Remember, opposites attract and the same poles repel. Before we start, make sure you have enough room to move. Let's start with the practice round. Here comes the magnet. Pay attention to its pole. Oh, it's a north pole. North and south attract. South pole. South and south pole repel. Next we have a north pole. North and south attract. All right. Let's get started. Round one. For our first round, Monica will continue to play with you. Don't forget to keep your eye on the magnet. First magnet, North Pole. Next magnet, South Pole. Remember, your arms and legs are South Poles. All right. There's that North Pole again. South Pole, will you repel or attract? Where will it land next? South Pole. Finally, North Pole. Round two. For this round, Monica won't be on screen as you play. So remember, opposite poles attract and same poles will repel. Here comes the magnet, get ready. South pole. North pole. North pole again. South Pole. Okay, I think you're understanding how to play. Let's move the magnet a little faster. South Pole. North Pole. South Pole. North Pole. South Pole. And finally, South Pole. Round three, our final round. This time, you'll notice two magnets come on screen. Double the magnets, double the fun. Here we go, scientists. North and South Pole. Remember, your arms and legs are South Poles. Will your arm and leg repel or attract to these magnets? Two North Poles! Don't fall, scientists! Two North Poles pulling across your body! Now two South Poles! How are you going to do this one? Hope you had fun moving around with us! Now! Let's go back to the discovery room. What a great field trip. Let's go over all the things that we did today. We started our field trip in the California Science Center using the Van de Graaff generator to investigate static electricity. We also investigated magnets to better understand how they attract and repel. Then we met up with Robert to put our learning to the test with a magnet car race. Finally, we got our bodies moving with a game where we repelled or attracted to a magnet. Now, scientists, do you remember the question of the day? How can we make something move? Can you use the buzzword to answer the question of the day? Force. Pause the video now to try to answer the question of the day using the buzzword. Okay, scientists, it's time to count our telemarks. 
How many times did you hear the buzzword? Pause the video now to count your check marks or tally marks. And the answer is... Six. We hope you had fun on this virtual field trip at the California Science Center, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. For more virtual field trip fun, visit our website.